Hello beautiful bookworms, it's Squirrely Nerdy Jess here, inviting you to join me for a day in my life when I visited the Cheltenham Literature Festival and met one of my favorite children's authors. Good morning. I always start my day by brushing my teeth and letting the dogs out. Sometimes they wake me up, but more so in their advanced age, I have to get them up. As you can see, it's definitely Halloween season in our house. By the way, a quick preview of the Halloween progress, which I am vlogging, so you will see all of that eventually. So today I'm going to the Cheltenham Literature Festival to attend an event at which there are going to be multiple children's authors, but particularly Anna James, who is the author of the Pages & Co series, which if you've seen some of my other videos, you'll know I'm kind of obsessed with this. It's a middle grade fantasy series, but it's just so gosh darn fun and perfect for book lovers. And this is the new book. This is the last one in the series. It came out very recently though. I did pre-order a copy, a signed copy. Um, so I don't need to get the sign today, but some of the other copies I have aren't signed. So I don't know. I'm gonna bring them all and just see if it's possible to get them signed. I'd love to get a picture with her with all the books at the very least, if not a little video. We'll see. I'm not quite sure what to expect. I was hoping to have finished the book before going today, but I have been all consumed by Halloween plans, so I'm only about that far. Uh, a little over halfway. If you don't know anything about this series, the first one is called Tilly and the Book Wanderers, or in America it's just called the Book Wanderers, but it's about essentially a world where certain people often passed down through family heritage have the ability to book wander, which means they can go into their favorite books and visit the characters and live out some of their favorite stories. There's a whole world built around book wandering and there's a government to it and there's there all these fun little elements um, of book wandering itself. So that's the first one to check out for sure. Again, it's a, it's a children's middle grade series, but it's just pure joy to me. I've only actually been to the Cheltenham Literature Festival once before. That's because there are a lot of people that come from outside of the area that go to these festivals. Um, Cheltenham's pretty big for a few different festivals. And there are a lot of financial supporters who are members of the, the festivals and they get access to all the tickets before the general public and they, they tend to buy up a lot of them. And even if there are still tickets available, they, they can get a little expensive. I was intending to try to get to uh, maybe three or four of the events this year, but other plans have come up. One of my best friends from the States has just arrived in the UK. She's in London to start, but then she's gonna come visit us. And I haven't seen her since our wedding. She was meant to come visit in 2020 and then 2020 happened and so uh, yeah it's been a minute since I've seen her. It's so obviously I put all of my other plans aside so I'm not going to any of the events next weekend. This is the only one I'm going to but it's okay because this this one is pretty much one of the top ones I wanted to go to anyway. But yeah so I'm gonna get ready. I'm gonna go feed the dogs because they're staring intently at me and huffing and puffing. Um and then I'll take you along with me. Hey, is it time to feed you? Should we go feed the puppy? Mm -hmm. 
our dogs very much need their own eating spaces because Tia is a bit of a menace when it comes to food. Yes, I'm coming. Not only that, but Marley also requires one of us nearby to protect him in case Tia tries to steal his food. I have to confess, I really don't like spending a lot of time on makeup, so this is the most I ever really do. Also, my hair is approaching the longest it's ever been, and it hasn't become too annoying or painful yet, so woo! Yes, I even have a pages and go bag to carry my books. I don't think they make this anymore, sadly. I realized though that I had plenty of time before I had to leave for the festival, so I decided to read some more of The Last Book Wanderer. So I've read about 56 pages. It's a very fast read, by the way, so I'm nearer to the end of the book. Um, but I'm going to stop reading for now and work on a few things, gather up a few things. Oh, I meant to throw some laundry in. I'm going to throw some laundry in. One of those things they never teach you growing up is the law of infinite laundry. Go see if my husband has woken up yet. Um, yeah, and start generally gathering myself up to head into Cheltenham. I also needed to pack up a small bag, print my event ticket, and grab some water and snacks so I don't spend any unnecessary money on food and drink while I'm there. Ooh, and something I purchased on Vinted arrived, so I went to pick that up. So I've just gone and picked up my Vinted purchase from the little in post locker, and I am obsessed because it's so soft and so cozy and comfy. Let me show you. Cozy, getting ready for the cooler weather, which is awesome. The problem is, it's actually really warm outside. <laughs> I'm obviously not going to wear this in, but I don't even think I can wear what I put on today. So I'm going to change. My whole outfit was far too warm. So I've gone for something a little bit lighter, but still fairly autumnal. And rather than having my hair down, I put it in a braid because it was getting whew. Just walking around the corner and back was enough to tell me that I was gonna be too warm. I'm also wearing one of my pendants that I made from an old battered up book. I used to have an Etsy shop where I sold these pendants, but that is no longer. However, I thought I'd wear one of them today. Finally, it was time to head out. I decided to take the bus in because parking in Cheltenham is already not my favorite thing in the world, but especially around a festival time, I just didn't want that stress. Besides, taking the bus meant I got to get in a bit more reading. This was a pretty good day as far as reading time, I must say. It's often much harder for me to find the time to read, apart from right before bed. So I am here. I'm a little bit early for the event that I am attending. It's about 2, not quite 2.40 I think, and my event is at uh, 3.15, so I'm just gonna have a look around. myself a quiet little spot where I can very self-consciously film. Um, I'm right outside the Hive, which is where the um, children's authors event is going to be. I found the Waterstones bookshop, but there was um, a big queue for a signing, and so I'll check that out again later. But I did get to go into the children's bookshop, which was very packed. Um, had a couple of signings going on in there, and just had a, had a quick look around.
Looks like the queue has gone to the bookshop, so I'm gonna head there. And then I wandered around the rest of the festival a bit. I still had some time, so I found a lovely spot to read a bit more, until I started to notice a queue forming. The talk was really lovely, getting to hear from four different perspectives of writing children's fantasy, and then afterward the authors all did book signings, where I finally got to meet Anna James. I didn't Thank see you so much. Much. I'm about 40 pages from the end of the last book, Wander, and I am absolutely itching to finish it, so... I am very much. I just want to pause here for a second to explain what happens next. So near the end of the talk, they asked for audience questions, and at first no one raised their hand. So I did so, and Anna initially called on me. But then loads of children raised their hands, and quite understandably, the focus went entirely onto them. So when I met Anna to have my book signed, she apologized for not getting to my question and asked if I still wanted to ask it. I then asked if she was alright with me recording it to put on my YouTube channel, which she was fine with. Her answer does include a little spoiler for the final book, but nothing major, and really, if you haven't read Pages & Co at all, it probably won't make any sense. But for those of you who have read at least the first three books, this will be a very fun bit of information, even if you haven't read the final book yet. So my question was, what elements of your books, be it a, a plot point or a character or a detail or something, most surprised you that it came out of your brain? Do you know what? Do you know what? Um, yeah, well, okay. I didn't come out of my brain, but I don't want to do spoilers, but I'll say there's something that happens at the very end of the book. No. How do I say that? So where you're at in the book, you would have met, they'll have already been to see the book. Oh, Diane, quite sure. So in the third book, there's the archive that I just came up with, where it has everyone has a book of their book wandering. Yeah. And I didn't really, I obviously heard the face, but it was only when I was researching the last book that I realised that they had. So a lovely coincidence. I just couldn't believe it when I read about the fates having an archive that mirrors so perfectly the archive I came up with without even knowing about that. So that was probably my most like, satisfying moment where I was like, oh my goodness, I can, I can land this. Okay? So that was the point where Did I was like, I'm going to land it and it's going to work. Oh, yeah. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. So I love it. So I just met Anna James and she was so nice. Um, you probably will have already seen it by now, but I also picked up Fable House uh, by E.L. Nori or Emma Nori. It sounded so interesting in the talk and I knew that I wanted to read it, so I got her to sign that as well. Hey, if you want to, if you want to introduce your book. Hello, I'm Emma Nori, E.L. Nori, and I'm the author of Fable House. Thank you! I have to say, your book sounded absolutely interesting uh, in the talk, so I knew I had to Lovely. Well, thank you for buying it. So, yeah. it's, um, there's also a bit of um, real history in there as well. It's definitely worth looking out. Thank you so much. It's okay. I, I look forward to it. But yes, it was very much worthwhile coming to. It was such a lovely, it was very kid focus as you would expect it to be because they're all children's authors, but um, it was really, really lovely. and. Yeah, give some, some ideas. Anyway, now I just have to figure out what I'm doing next. Onward. Oh, 
Well, that was a really lovely day. I'm glad I got to do something at the Cheltenham Literature Festival this year. I am slightly bummed that I'm going to miss the other events, but to be honest, I'm very excited that my friend is coming to visit, so it's absolutely fine. The other ones I was going to try to see were Max Porter and Lemony Snicket, and I can't remember if it was another one or not, but either way, I'm heading home now. I don't know how I'm getting home at the moment. I'm sort of walking in a vague direction. I was gonna catch the bus home, um, but the the bus sort of disappeared from the board and it was gonna be another 10 minutes or so. And I'm actually not too far from somewhere where I can be collected either by a husband or a mother-in-law. So yeah, I'm just gonna go for a nice little walk. Oh, is that my bus? That's my bus. That's the one I was trying to catch. Whoops. <laughs> I do have to say it is a lovely day for a walk. The temperature is just it's so nice and the air feels lovely that it's just that slight breeze. Yeah, I'm I'm enjoying walking for sure. I think what I'm gonna do when I get home is try to finish the last book wonder because now I'm only like maybe 30 pages away and I wanna finish it. So I am home now. It's um, just gone nine o'clock. So after the festival, I did end up getting picked up by my mother-in-law. We spent a lot of time with her and then we made a very brief appearance at a friend's birthday party. It turned out that we didn't really know anybody else there and it was really loud and we were both becoming little awkward turtles in the corner. So we um, s snuck our way out pretty quickly. <laughs> So now we're home. I am very soon going to get ready for bed and get an early night because I've got an early morning tomorrow. So I'm going to get ready and then I'm going to finish off the last book, Wander, the last Pages & Co book. It's very sad, but I am excited to then hopefully be able to read at least a chapter of Fable House because this sounds really interesting. I wasn't intending on reading another children's book after I finished Pages & Co, but after today, I just want to jump into this. But I did want to quickly pass along a few things that were said at the event itself. So in addition to Anna James and Eel Nori, there was Sky McKenna, who's an Australian writer living in the UK now, I think, who wrote Hedge Witch and Wood Witch. And apparently her next one is going to be Sea Witch. And Lee Newberry, who wrote The Last Firefox and The First Shadow Dragon. And it sounds like there's going to be a third in that series as well. I have not read any of their books, but it was a lovely event. And it was really great to be able to hear from a panel of people that all write in similar genres for similar ages. I actually wrote down a few things that I liked that they had said about their writing process and stuff like that. One tip that Anna James gave about writing fantasy is to always come up with a mode of magical transportation because you will save yourself a lot of hassle of being able to get anywhere you want to go, particularly with child characters who would otherwise generally face certain restrictions concerning travel. And of course in Pages & Co from I think the third book onwards, she uses a magical train called the Sesquipedalian or the Quip for short. One thing Sky said, Sky McKenna, that I really liked was, sorry, I seem to be starting to go croaky. Well, a couple of things. One, she talked a lot about using all of your senses when describing things in your books. Apparently her books are filled with a lot of descriptions about food and like scents and tastes and things like that. And it is something I generally like to think of too when I'm writing, so. But the other thing she mentioned, and this isn't so much about writing, but she talked about what it was like moving to a different country as an adult. Like I said, I think she now lives in the UK, but she's originally from the outback of Australia. And I, of course, moved from the US to the UK and she talked about how you essentially get to have a second childhood because all of a sudden you're getting to experience all these different things that you never experienced that most people experience as a child and you have this whole new sense of wonder and exploration and curiosity and I could so relate to that and it gave me a lot of ideas of how to use that experience in writing so that was very fun. Oh, and from Lee, I got to learn a new Welsh word because he was Welsh and he had the most adorable Welsh accent. And I think it's pronounced cooch and it means like a warm, cuddly hug. And that just sums up the day, really. It was definitely a curl up with a good book. 
that feels just like a warm, cuddly hug. And that's it. That was my day. Thanks for coming along with me. Be kind, be curious, be effective. No, I changed it. Be kind, be curious, be authentic and effective.